Well, hello and welcome to the VK6 Hours Fun with Amateur Radio Channel, putting the fun back into Amateur Radio. Now, uh, not so long ago, I did a quick video where I put the antenna analyzer on the uh, antenna feed point there. That's normally what's connected to the automatic ATU. There's, um, there's two ground wires here and the antenna there. And uh, yeah, I'm fixing my house up, so that's why I'm sort of covered in plaster and paint. Okay, now, <clears throat> and I said to you, this is, uh, you know, the, um, the auto tuner is doing a really good job matching an SWR greater than 9 to 1 and an impedance greater than 350 ohms. So there you go, there you've got 9 to 1 there and 350 ohms. Impedance is greater than 350 ohms there. And um, when I looked at this response, Oh, I actually compared the MFJ to the SGC, that's what it was all about, that's right, it's coming back to me now. But um, anyway, this is the response of the antenna, and I thought, well, both units are doing a very good job matching that load, and I got some very good reports with it. Um, I was getting uh, really good reports with it, which was quite surprising. It's about uh, a half wave on 40 metres long, it's about 40 metres of steel wire between a couple of trees. And uh, I would have thought one of those rather nice dips in the antenna response would have been on 3605. As you can see, centre frequency there, 3605. Vertical dotted line is 3605. It's nowhere near it. And so I thought, OK, well, let's... First of all, let's just see where... Let's just see where that is. So if I go to... Oops. I don't drive this thing from one video to the other, for, <laughs> to the next, yeah, there we go, 3605, okay. And I now move that along, okay, so 3605, so now we can see, see the frequency change, centre frequency, see that changing, and find out where the nearest dip is. So there's one there, that's uh, 4.805. See, I've got the uh, sweep width here uh, set to 10 megs. Opened up the sweep width on this. The mosquito thinks it's going to have lunch on me, literally. Okay, and we got one there. Oh, look at that. I might have even said that before. Excellent response there for uh, 1.505. Was that 585? That's no, 585. 1.585 megs. Um, <coughs> so I thought, okay, well let's uh, let's just get the sweet spot onto 3605 and see if it makes any difference. So let's just put it back. Oops. 3605, that's the West Australian 80 metre chit chat channel. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right, so I thought, okay, let's uh, let's modify the antenna to get the sweet spot on 3605. As I, as I said previously, even though this is 9 to 1, uh, SWR is greater than 9 to 1, and the impedance is greater than the 350 ohms, the automatic ATU match that to 50 ohms, no problem. And that's both the MFJ um, 998RT and the SGC230. Both match that load to 50 ohms, no problem at all. And I've got some very good reports. But I just thought I'd move the sweet spot on the antenna response to 3605 and just see what difference it made to the signal reports I was getting. So, uh, I've just got to connect, a wire, connect the extension part of the antenna on and uh, take, a look at the, uh, take a look at the response as it is now. Right, okay, so I've extended the length of the antenna to move one of the sweet spots uh, to 3605 or thereabouts. Hang on, let's just get that over there. Uh, 
And uh, actually, I'll just make that. There we go. There we go. So that's not far. That's not that's not far off being optimised for three six oh five. So that's two point six. Probably varies a bit with the with the weather and the ground conductivity and all that sort of stuff. But as you can see, I've moved one of the sweet spots onto 3605. So now the SWR is only 2.6 or 2.7. It's floating around a bit and the impedance is 130, 32 ohms. So now the antenna's more like a 5 8 in length, uh, but the, um, the automatic antenna tuner has a far, a, 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 a far closer impedance or a far, a far, far closer load impedance to match. To 50 ohms, so it's going to reduce the, <coughs> reduce the voltage across the output of the uh, the automatic antenna tuner, which is uh, which can only be a good thing. Now, what I did to uh, actually, let's just out of curiosity, let's just see where the where it's moved the other sweet spot to. Be great if this is about 1.8. Uh, 1.2, there we go. So if, it, if I wanted to have a chat on medium wave, 1.245 megahertz, it would, uh, it would go quite well. Actually, let's just see where the. Uh, oops. Where the other one is. Mm, that's five. That's five eight five. Where's this one. And that's eight one four five. So there's no nice sweet spot for forty meters. I've just optimized it for. Uh, I've optimised it for 80. As you can see, the response of the antenna, <coughs> as the frequency is getting higher, the bandwidth of the antenna is getting wider. This is quite late in the afternoon, so the mozzies are, and it's been raining, so there's a few mozzies around, which is a bit annoying. Okay, so you can see the bandwidth on uh, bandwidth on five megs, 5.845 is a lot less. And there we go, so I'm about 3.6. Get that back. I remember how to drive this bloody thing one day. There we go. Okay. So there we are on 3605, our chit chat channel. 2.7 and uh, an impedance of 132 ohms. Now, and the reports I've got with it, since I changed the response of the antenna to give me that nice big dip on 3605, I've been about 10 dB up. Did some tests, I've been getting some very good reports around the place. Now, <coughs> all I did to extend the length of it was this rather nasty looking mess here. Just wire going backwards and forwards. Wire going backwards and forwards between a couple of star pickets just to make the uh, to make the antenna longer. So the bit that I added to the antenna is not adding to the radiation efficiency. It must be the bit up between the trees, but because the antenna is now the right length or the sort of length that gives a uh, gives a nice big dip on 3605. Um, it's giving me uh, it's giving me imp improved signal strength out and about. 
doesn't even seem to worry it that the uh, the wire runs through this bush here. I've only just noticed that, and it's grown since I put that there. But uh, anyway, there you go. So, just by putting that um, that uh, length of wire at the feed point of the antenna to save me taking all the antenna down, and of course it makes it very easy to put the antenna back exactly as it was, because all I, all I have to do is take the uh, the extension wire off and all I did was on the antenna wire it's got one of these crimp lugs on the extension wire is one of those crimp lugs so I just bolted them together to extend the piece of wire uh, to give me that response and if I wanted to change it back to exactly as it was I can just uh, I can just undo the bolt and take the extra bit out and um, put it back exactly as it was uh, I don't think I will though because I've been getting some very good reports uh, since I changed it but I may still play around with it because um, I may try and get uh, get it to get it to work well on the other bands as well. I mean, it probably does, but I mean, there's no nice sweet spot sitting over 7.2 or 1.8, which is peculiar, really. Okay, well, hope you found that interesting, as always.